Have you figured out your niche? Are you helping adding value to other people's lives? Then you're in the right place. Welcome to Munira's Musings with your host, Munira Zahabi. Greetings, Chicagoland. This is Munira with another episode of Munira's Musings. Our guest today is from Florida, Sherry Kaplan. Hi, Sherry. Welcome to Munira's Musings. Hi, Munira. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. So Sherry is a healer, right? help people fix themselves, I guess. I am Manira Zahabi. I am the niche navigator and we help people find their niches. On this show, we showcase every person out there who has found their niche and who are helping other people with the gift they've received. So welcome to our show, Sherry. Thank you so much for being here. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Thank you so much. Um, my name is Sherry Kaplan. I am also known as the Revitalizer. I help remove physical and emotional, emotional pain by removing energetic blockages. And uh, how I use that is I use many different modalities of healing in my sessions with my clients to help move them from being stuck, being unclear, being unmotivated, being in pain, to be able to move forward with their life with confidence and clarity and happiness and having a pain-free body. So I like the fact that you are saying that you remove energy blockages. We're just going to dive right into it. So I'm going to ask you, how do people know they have energy blockages and what do that, what does that feel like? Um, you feel heavy. You feel like you can't move forward. Like there's a weight on your chest and there's like an elephant just here and it, and, and you just, you feel pressure here. You might feel a little blockage in your throat. You might, you might feel stagnant and you're not, you don't feel like you can move forward in life and, and you can't understand why. And you can't understand why you can't think clearly and you, or you know what you want to do, but you just can't do it. So there's like a disconnect in your body of your energetic field. It's like the way I look at the chakra system is they're like tires on the car and they all have to be mo moving in the same direction. And if the tires are not moving in the same direction, then the car is not going to go and they are the car. So um, my goal is to get all the tires moving in the same direction at the same speed so that they can move from point A to point Z with smooth sailing. Okay, I understand that completely, but how would I know that it's energy blockages and not a medical um, ailment that I'm facing? I mean, I'm, I'm just asking for the public. Most, most people, the pain in their body starts with emotional blockages. Emotional pain creates physical pain, okay? Oh, so it starts in the heart or in the mind. It's an emotional, emotional, it's like emotions in the tissues. It's issues in the tissues. So um, you I might, like <laughs> yeah, they, they are issues in your tissues. And, you know, cancer has to do with anger. And, you know, even though we think it's all lifestyle, but there's a lot of anger in our body and it starts building up and building up and building up and festering and, and getting thicker and thicker. And, and so if we release all these stuck emotions in our, in our, body, mind, and spirit, then things are going to be able to flow and with ease and grace. So you're not having restrictions and limitations and you're not, you're not in contraction. You're more in expansion. When people are in a contraction, they're holding on and they can't let go and they can't be free. And when you're expanding, then you're in the you're in motion. You're allowing things to happen and you're not in resistance. So a lot of people don't know how to relax. They just don't know how to shut down. Like just to come set, be with me for an hour, just to shut down their mind and forget, leave everything behind. They're like, I forgot what it's like to not think. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So we, our minds keep going at a hundred miles an hour because that's what minds do. And it is, you are saying it's important to give it a rest and not do anything. Right. Well, as, as you know, meditation is, is the new medicine. And, um, and it's about being present and being quiet and accepting what is. And the more we stop thinking, the more we can heal because we, we get consumed. Our, we, these wheels keep turning and turning and turning and we can't be at peace with what is. 
And yes, once we quiet our mind and we can really start listening to the messages that come from above, our angels, masters, and guides, or our deceased loved ones might be trying to communicate with us. And I find that when I'm quiet, you know, even in the shower, that's when I get my best download messages is when I'm quiet in the shower. I call those the downloads and I'm in, the, and then I just feel it and, and I hear it. I hear these words and these messages and I literally have to write on my bathroom wall what I just heard because that was my moment of clarity. So yes, we, when we get quiet, we receive information, we receive messages, and then we allow ourselves to heal. You know, you, it shows how compassionate you are with this. So I have one more question before we go into the niche part of it. Tell me why, if this, if this methodology is so important and is so essential to our lives right now, why is it that the oncologists and all of the other physicians are not using this as a form of cure for diseases like cancer? Well, I don't think we can get into that because there's money involved in cures. I see. There's money involved in cures. And there were doctors that were taken away from this planet because they had some cures for cancer. I see. I Do you remember? So it's, a, it's a global economy thing. Oh, there's a lot of money in cancer. Just like, you know, with, with, with AIDS. There's no cure for AIDS. And they think that they're going to come out with a vaccine when there hasn't been a cure for AIDS in 30 years or no cure for cancer, I, I don't get it. Um, so th there's, uh, there, there's an East-West medical system and the more you know, the more they're gonna take you down. And yes, there is cures for cancer. And I, I personally know somebody who had many friends that died because they knew the cure for cancer. Oh, okay, okay. So we'll leave it at that. So tell- But, but, but people can research it. They can go to uh, naturalhealthnews.com um, and they can read about all the doctors that got uh, murdered or supposedly had accidents or supposedly had heart attacks or uh, just had um, weird ways of dying last year because they, start, they, they, they had some answer and they wanted the product taken off the market. Wow. Okay, so that's a controversy we don't want to get into, but thank mm -hmm. you so much for sharing that. So tell me how you found your niche. What was your journey like and? Oh, how did it start? Yes, <laughs> let's uh, start at the beginning. <laughs> okay, let me see what time it is. All right, we got, we got 30 minutes, 25 minutes? No, we got about 10 minutes. Ten, 10 minutes? Yes. 10 minutes on this question or 10 minutes total? 10 minutes total. <laughs> total, oh, okay. So we'll make it short and sweet then. I thought we had a half hour. Okay. Um, geez. So uh, I have a background in catering event. Um, I've always been in marketing, catering, advertising. I'm a caregiver. I was a organizer. I had all kinds of jobs. All, I wore all kinds of hats and I was kind of finding myself. And there was a point in my life where I was really trying to find my purpose like a lot of people right now it was like who am i and where am i going and what, what am i here to do to help serve the world and i heard dr john d martini speak at a conference in miami that i attended and i was like in near the front row and it was like he was talking to me and he really resonated and he woke me up because he asked me what my true values were what was so important to me what do i talk about what do i spend my money on like where do I go on vacation? What kind of books do I read? What, you know, what surrounds my environment? What do I think about all day? So it really made me understand that my everything was healing, 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 healing. Because I was on my own path for healing because I, I, I had my own autoimmune problem. So I was always trying to seek solutions for myself. So I was the one on the table receiving the services. And when he says healing, I said, okay, I've been told my whole life that I'm a healer, but I didn't know how to access my gifts. They said it was in my hands. They said it was in my astrology chart. They said I had a natural gift to be a teacher, a healer, a leader. Um, I had to do with in the health field. And, and I said, okay, healing, healing, healing. And it was just like I had this Kundalini awakening. I just like, I just woke up and everything was about, I had to do my healing. So at that point in my life, I had already Reiki level two and I did nothing with it. I just sat on the, in, 
on the wall. I had a pretty little plaque on the wall and I didn't know how to use it. So I said, okay, let me go get my master's. So I went and got my Reiki master's level the following weekend and I got reattuned and I posted it on Facebook and I posted it on my banner and I had 300 likes and comments saying where, when, and how much. I was like, wow, I just went into business. Like, how am I going to do this? I didn't have a place to do it. I said, okay, I'm off work on Tuesday and Thursday. You can come to my house and this is how much I'm going to charge. And I charged $28 and I was with them for two hours. And I was really, really busy. I was working from nine o'clock in the morning to nine o'clock at night. I was not even eating. I was just high on the energy. I was high on what was going on. I couldn't believe that I was, this was working. People were giving me feedback and they were healing. You know, they got off the table and they go, wow, what, what just happened? And I'm like, what happened? What happened? And like everybody who got off the table, I'm like, so what happened? What happened? So I would have them write testimonials to help give me confidence because as, if you're a new healer, you don't have a lot of confidence and you don't know how much to charge. Um, and, and you really need to build your self-worth at the beginning because we're really at that point of like believing in ourselves and our abilities. And we have to also remember that it's not us doing the healing. We are the channel. Um, we are the middleman of the healing abilities. You know, once like once the person receives and surrenders, then healing occurs. I'm just the middleman. Okay. But from that day forward, I didn't look backwards. That was that moment that I, I stepped into my, my power, into my place in the world. And, um, and it's been over five years. Awesome. So what started out as a talk, right? And you said you had had it, you had heard people tell you that it's in your astrological charts and in your hand. Who were these people that had said that? Who were they? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I've been a soul seeker um, my whole life. So if there's anybody out there who loves, you know, astrology readings and numerology readings and tarot readings and psychics and mediums and channel, I'm, I'm hooked. Those are, those are the best friends in my life so much that I created a whole business out of this. And I'll share with that after, but um, when, when you need answers, you go to other people for the answers. Now I realize that I have the answers and people come to me for the answers. I become a channel. I become intuitive. I've tapped into my psychic ability now. So um, I've opened up the portal of my third eye in order to receive the messages from above. And I can see, hear, and feel um, things that are happening around me. Oh, so, that's awesome. Yeah, I picked up my own gifts. And along the way, you know, from starting with the Reiki, and then I went forward. Then I went for sound healing. I went twice. I went to hear uh, my teacher, Jay Schwed. He, he taught me twice. And I never thought it would get to be what it was, where it would turn into the fact that I would do a once a week sound healing bath for the community for five years, which I did every week called revitalizing monday revitalizing tuesday revitalizing wednesday now we're starting a new one which is like a revitalizing saturday and we just began that this past weekend oh so what do you do in that in those um i have a virtual fair online we just did our we just launched our first event we did it on Lionsgate on saturday and we had over 21 practitioners participate and we had 89 people who came through the room Oh, so this was the event that you were telling me about. Correct. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I, it was a lot of coordination. I became the engineer and the producer and the coordinator logistics. It was, to, I was saying it was like pulling off a wedding without a budget. So, you know, so the thing is that you, despite of all of the um, hats you wore in your previous professions or previous jobs, you took all of that and were able to maneuver and re- Re pivot, pivot. <laughs> That's what, yes, thank you. Re pivot into all of the things that you are doing now. So there are some people out there who are who've lost their jobs with COVID right now, and you know who are in a, not in a good place. And to help them out, how would you say they should pivot as well? Okay. Some words of wisdom, please. Okay. Well, I sat frustrated for a couple of months in my house. I'm a healer. I'm a sound healer. I'm an organizer. I've been doing this for five years. Why can't I do it now? So how can we do what we do now, but virtually? Okay, we, we have to get creative. And I'm like, 
I've been doing what I've been doing. How can we bring us all to the same platform and make it work? Well, we got to do it, guys. We got to get creative. You can teach. Everyone is a teacher. Everyone has a gift and a skill. Everyone has advice. They're a coach. Whatever you love to do and it makes you happy, that's what you can teach. Whether you cook, whether you play music, whether you paint, whether, whether you know how to do calligraphy, you could teach people. People are, they have nowhere to go. This is our new virtual world. If, if We want to feel safe in our home. So you allow them, you come into their living room, into their home, and you bring them some guidance, support, entertainment, engagement, inspiration, motivation. Everyone has something to offer. That's powerful. That's powerful. I'm, I'm just <laughs> downloading the things that you said. You know, and the thing is, Many people are scared right now. And it, you, what you're saying is awesome because you can then repurpose and repivot, right? That's the word I was looking for, repurpose and repivot into whatever you're looking into. Now, everybody wants to become, everybody wants good healing. What is one thing that they can do sitting at home that can just, you know, help them bring some peace, inner peace? Well, how to, how to create inner peace, allow self time, um, get your essential oils, get some crystals out, put on some nice music, shut the doors and say, leave me alone. If you're living with other people, um, we have, we have to just remember, um, self, you know, time for us to shut down our body mind in order to move forward. Um, you know, I have, I have instruments sitting here in my living room. I can play sound healing all day long for anybody whenever they want it anywhere in the world. And I have the gongs, the singing bowls, the Tibetan bowls, my bells, my chimes, all kinds of stuff. I got probably 30, 40 instruments over there. So all of us have instruments. You know, you can even make your own instruments. If you feel stuck, I would like everyone to think about how to get unstuck. If you're feeling stuck, your chakras need to get opened up. So your chakras sometimes need a little bit of noise. So if you got something that makes noise. If you have something that makes noise, even a vitamin bottle, something that you can shake in front of you, just move it up and down your chakras and just open up your chakras a little bit. Sometimes they get a little sleepy and they get slow and they, they start protecting themselves. So they, they block up. But if you, you can clap in front of your chakras, you can take a bell. You can take a drum. You can take a Tibetan bowl. Just open up your chakras in front of your chakras. And then, then you balance your chakras out. And then you put your hands on your heart, your throat, your third eye, your belly, your solar plexus. You can put it on the top of your head, the side of your head, right here. Just allow yourself to just, just to do this for a little while will just make you feel at peace. Just to just lay down, people just love, love, love. It just makes you like when you're when you were a child, when your mom touched your face, you felt loved, right? So when I do access consciousness bars, which you work on the 33 um, points on your head, I I put my hands in different positions, and people are just like oh, and they're just just loving, just to, just to be touched and to be held. They don't realize it's so comforted just to have your head held. That reminds me, the little ones, the grandkids, when they come over, they like a lot of noise, right? They like hide and seek and it's a peekaboo. And all these games, the childhood games that we play with our grandchildren are actually helping them and us because then when we close our eyes and when we hold them and we, you know, they have the noisemaker things that, you know, but it, it kind of makes sense because you need that in your life, right? <clears throat> How do people find you, Sherry? Uh, well, I'm Sherry Kaplan at sherrykaplan.com. And my event is uh, Healers Network. I have a group on Facebook called Healers Network of South Florida. And the event is going to be always labeled Healers Network Virtual Fair. And it's going to be every Saturday from 12 to 9 o'clock. We are live on Facebook under the Healers Network group. And we are also on Zoom. And in order for you to participate in the breakout sessions for the event, we have a full day event every Saturday. We have over 20 speakers that speak from 20 to 30 minutes. And we have breakout rooms where you can visit them throughout the whole day. And we also have door prizes and raffles to give away as well. So um, it's always going to be a bit.ly link, B-I-T-L-Y 
forward slash, uh, and it's going to be the date. The date will be 815 and it'll be virtual fair will be the link. But I also offer free, um, free chakra readings anywhere in the world, uh, 20 minute sessions. I use my, my dowsing rods, my cards and my pendulum to identify where the chakras are blocked. Okay, so awesome. So, and then from there you, you tell them what the problem is and then they can offer, you offer, them, offer them to work with you. I provide solutions to their blockages, correct. I help them move forward, get them unstuck. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sherry. This was an amazing uh, little talk. I, I learned so much, so, especially about opening chakra, chakras. And the thing is, I, I'm not into healing a lot, but I think that's becoming a more um, important subject because now that the world has seen and felt COVID, we need to understand that our, our healing powers have to be activated, right? Well, we have to become our own doctors right now. We have to um, rely on our own immune system and keep ourselves strong and healthy. Um, once we set out the door and put ourselves in anybody else's uh, breathing space at this point, <laughs> you know, we, we're taking some risks. So we need to be strong inside and keep our immune system strong. And I become an expert at it. So if anybody needs some support in that, I've been keeping my immune system strong a long time. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> go ahead and find Re uh, Sherry Kaplan. She is an intuitive healer and she heals people. So uh, in this time and day and day and age, we do need something like that. Some, you know, miracle. Uh, this may be a miracle for a lot of people. So who knows, right? <laughs> well, the fact is that I created this virtual fair. You know, if I had an event live and now I pivoted and I brought it online, that's what everybody needs to think about. What did you do before and what can you bring online? So now all these people are involved. They don't have to get in their car and drive to an event or an expo. They literally just open up their, put on their Zoom and they open up their house and they're in business. There you go. So you know what, yep. ladies and gentlemen, first of all, your health is important. Second of all, pivot. You have to be creative to figure out what your um, gifts are what you know and now you can change that to create something else and if you have any issues or any problems or any hurdles there you have we have Sherry right here and then you have me as the niche navigator who can help you with all of these things or find a coach that can help you with that said if you like this show go ahead like share and subscribe to our channel thank you Sherry I appreciate it thank you for having me Thank you for listening to this episode of Munira's Musings with your host, Munira Zahabi. If you enjoyed our show, please share and subscribe to this channel. And for more content, please join our Facebook group.